Welcome to the Porsche Club Insider, your one stop for all things Porsche and PCA. Here's your host, Vu Gwyn, and the Insider Crew. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Porsche Club Insider episode 46. And more importantly, Happy New Year. Happy Lunar New Year. The uh, only reason I brought this up was because <laughs> I saw a cat. And I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. It's the year of the cat. I like cats. And then you send pictures of a rabbit. Correct. Which one is it? Correct. So, so in Vietnamese, it's actually the year of the rabbit. But in Chinese, it's the. I'm it's sorry. In Vietnamese, way. it's the year of the cat. In Chinese, it's the year of the rabbit. The rabbit. And the reason being, is there's 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 theories, well, but you're the way you're Vietnamese, so why did you send pictures of the rabbit? Because because the rest of the world celebrates the year of the rabbit. Like it's we don't like the lucky money envelopes, which I prepared for all three of you. Aww, new year, shucks. new money. So here's lucky money for you. So lucky much. money for you. Lucky money it's my for raise. you. We got you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious if we had our raises were like this. You scratch off the seam what you got. <laughs> we may or may not get one. Yes, you may or may not. So lucky money. Uh, good luck with that. But yeah, so most of the world celebrates Year of the Rabbit. Uh, Vietnamese, it's Year of the Cat. Um, I think it's because in, in Chinese, when you say rabbit in Chinese, it's it's pronounced very similar to the way you say cat in Vietnamese. So mm -hmm. perhaps that, that is why. But regardless, it's the end of the year of the tiger, which is my year. And when it's your year, especially your 48th birthday year, um, that's not really a very lucky year for a tiger. So <laughs> it comes to an end. So I'm happy about that, and I'm looking forward to And And the last year, of course, was not difficult. Uh, it was just... It required extra effort with everything. It was a very good year still, but it was, things weren't as Should easy Should I last bring year. back the podcast episode of you and the cruise? <laughs> what was difficult about your life? <laughs> as I said, not everything was difficult, yeah, but yeah. there was there's lots. Of, there was a lot of extra Fitting effort. Fitting into that suit might have been difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go again. Here we go again. So at the table today, of course, you've already heard Manny's voice, Damon's voice, but we have a, a special guest today. Uh, the, the youngest of the crew here at PCA National Headquarters, and that's Bogdan Roberson. Welcome. Th thank you so much for having me on. I'm just super excited to be here today. All right, so since you're not used to it, make sure you're close up to the mic. Um, stay about. Absolutely. There you go. There, there, there you go. go. Nice and clear. Um, so anyways, uh, we'll go into depth ab about why you're here a little bit later. But um, man, what uh, what a start has been! So I just got a call from um, a PCA member asking about how 2023 has started for us, and man, does it even feel like it's the start of the year? And we're going, we're going 110 percent. Yes, we are. So it's, many it's hard to believe it's already the uh, we're recording this on the 18th, so uh, of January, and it, it it still kind of feels like the first week in January. <laughs> it's so much. You know, I on. wish it were because you know it's just been you know off the wall, just trying to get get a uh, plan started for the new year and uh, we never slow down yeah well, i will sure. call out your friend call out my friend paul gentilly oh god who i'm texting with right now because he can't figure out how to register for <laughs> for tech tactics is he is he is he sweating now because he's not worried he's not gonna be able to get in that's uh, so funny now he's claiming that he didn't finish his first cup of coffee that's why he couldn't find oh my god i told him excuses, i told him excuses. i said you know honestly if you can't figure out how to use Motorsport Reg and register, then maybe you shouldn't come to Tech Tactics. Aww. Maybe Tech this Tactics is, like is a way not we, for you. We vet people, you know. you got to have somewhat an understanding of technology. Fortunately, you know, he has an hour and 25 minutes to figure that out. I, for, so. I, forgot, I forgot what I said last time on the podcast when we brought his name up. And I said, you know, when I make fun of you, it's kind of like when I say, bless your heart to someone. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, I apologize and make fun of you all at the same time. But well, yeah, yeah he yeah. he seems to come up very often. So he's our good friend here locally, so that's why. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, the antics. I was surprised that he just he didn't just drive up to the office <laughs> and, and, and ask <laughs> us to show him on the computer. Yeah. Actually, uh, one of the recent one mile reviews was uh, that red um, Macan GTS that was Macan called, S or Macan S, yes, Macan S, Macan yes. S uh, Carmine Red, I believe. That was his. That was Paul Gentilis. Yeah. So thank you, Paul. All right, a little bit of housekeeping. Be sure to, if you enjoy. The episode hit the like button hit subscribe on youtube as well as comment we appreciate seeing all the comments i'm going to just run through names to say thank you for those in the last episode that commented craig s roger hatfield our buddy e 
Sheehan, Dan McNally, GTR1952, Lance Johnson, Scrambling Jim, Gurney Eagle 500, Brett Jacobson, and Gary Dixon. Thank you all for commenting. Uh, many of you put in your uh, your numbers on the the cars that uh, the pricing of the cars that will be at auction. We'll see which one of you are right, and we'll give you a shout out if you are correct. All right, let's talk about what we did last week, Manny. We had the uh, Chesapeake Region after holiday party. We did go to Cars and Coffee. Uh, so I don't know when it's going to end because it's getting colder and colder. And it was pretty freaking cold. We were inside a coffee shop, nice and warm. And then uh, Bob Miller decided he wanted to go look at cars. So we went to look at cars for five minutes or ten minutes. Were there cars? There were, yeah, there were cars. Okay. It hasn't Um, been that cold lately. Damon, it was like 17 degrees. Oh, oh, really? Maybe you're not waking up yet at the time that we're at Cars and Coffee. By the time he he wakes up, it's already (laughs) like 40 degrees. (laughs) Um, But uh, then later that night, we had the uh, Chesapeake Region After Holiday Party, which I talked about a little bit last uh, podcast. I was bummed I missed it. Yankee Swap, and it was... uh, it was a lot of fun. We had like what was like the what people. was the primo gift this year that was swapped? So believe it or not, forth. it was a Volkswagen Beetle deck lid. That a, was one of the uh, top gifts. A deck lid, like a so, full on. So uh, one of the um, members saw that her neighbor was throwing this deck lid away, and what? so she went and picked it up and said, "This would be pretty cool a wall art." So she wrapped it. No one could figure out what it was on the uh, when it was wrapped because all the gifts were wrapped, you know, and. Uh, so when the person who picked that gift opened it up, it it had the license plate from '69. Whoa! And wow. I thought I knew my Beatles, and you know the the um, the newer, if you will, the Beatles uh, got uh, to the '70s. They had more events. Mm-hmm. So I thought, uh, oh, it's got to be a '72, '73. It was a '54 to '55. What? That's got to be worth somebody some money. looked it up while we were doing it, we were having the Yankee swap, and it was a seven hundred dollar uh, what deck lid. Wow! And someone was just gonna toss it. Someone's going to toss it, but the best part was Bob Gutyar, who, uh, whose wife uh, Ellen wanted it because she paints these things and puts them up as wall art. And uh, I was like, "You are going to be so much trouble because you're not going to win this. You never do. You <laughs> always never, think you're going to. He never wins anything he, good. He, he always uh, shoots for the moon. And I said, "Now you got to go find one. And they're not. There's they're some that are cheap, but the fifty four to fifty fives were expensive. So he, no, he didn't win that. He went home with this uh, not as valuable pillow. Yeah. So um. Yeah, There's definitely a, a strategy to how to go home with the prize that you want and how to stay in the game and yeah but uh, yeah they never they never win anything good. He get he gets like they got lights and they got like golf balls <laughs> one year. Yeah, it's gotten uh, they've gotten much better. I mean um, they uh, they brought the uh, sign poster from Rolex Twenty Four. Oh, I swear awesome. it was all that's the drivers. Yeah, the team uh, G- the RSR team that ran. All six drivers uh, signed a separate Porsche poster. It was uh, yeah, it's very cool. Some nice Usually, stuff. it's like the tailors that go down to Rolex. I th- yeah, I think it was them. I didn't. They didn't I didn't. I don't want to give them credit or <laughs> <laughs> say they did wrongly. It, give them someone credit. else uh, yeah. bought it. But uh, yeah, it was a. Uh, it was pretty good. Awesome. How about you, Damon? Well, uh, I didn't do a lot of car stuff, but I did go into the garage with um, a set of. Husky picks instead of harbor freight picks to try and work at that front main seal again. Oh, and back at the seal. Yeah, no, I've it's been a few weeks now, but that that's the joy of having a garage and not being able, not needing to move your car. I'm I'm just kind of going out to the garage when I have a little time and thinking of new ways to uh, get that seal out and and definitely not rushing. Mm-hmm. But um, you have but heat, yeah, you have heat in the garage. I don't, but it's it's not too bad. You, I just wear a sweatshirt, pants, and then I have my overalls, yep. you know, the, the yep. onesie sort of thing. Yep. And uh, that's warm enough. So, and so uh, was it successful? Were you able to get the I was up? not. Wow. So I didn't spend too much time. It's it's not something you want to sit there working at for two hours because two hours working on a, a yep. crank front, front main seal, you're probably going to scratch the crank metal or, or right. the, the ceiling surface. And so, yeah, I'm really taking it slow. No need to rush. That Man. didn't work. On to the next one. More so, power to you. That yeah, takes a lot of patience. Yeah, but you know, what I did do over the weekend is um, maybe you you all don't have this sort of issue, but you know how um, like your mom or your grandma always had that like room that you never went into and it was just filled with stuff. Um, yeah, like my, the, my grandma the, had that the knickknack piece. room or the or the living room or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Right? Nobody goes in there. Right. Nobody opens the door, and, and if you do, it's just like closed immediately. Yeah. Well, I have a room like that where I've maybe it's not that bad because it's my office. I've 
kept part of it clean, but there's a lot of stuff stored in there. And uh, I finally went to Ikea, bought some shelving for my side of the room, and put all my magazines that were sitting in boxes there, and put the TV up on the wall, and, and now my office looks like an office. How so, long have you so lived in that house? Uh, October 2016. He's finally <laughs> adulting. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Room to expand. So, so that's what I did over the weekend. Now, Bogdan, you've been maybe not, yeah, you've been doing some car stuff lately. I've <laughs> maybe been not doing, by choice. <laughs> yes, I have spent on car repairs uh, in last six months uh, around $8,000, which oh, is twice goodness. the amount of money which I bought my first car for. <laughs> so, yeah, but, you know, hopefully... Thank you, Wu, for helping me out finding a good shot. But hopefully, this is a last repair in a while. <laughs> it's not. And, and no. tell, tell our, our uh, listeners what car this is and what year because it'll make a lot more sense. Yeah. Okay, okay. So currently, <laughs> I drive a 2012 BMW 650i. Oh, there we go. Boy. Great car, but it's a great uh, commuter car. Great gas mileage, right? <laughs> <laughs> twin Turbo has a commute almost as long as mine. Twin Turbo V8. Yeah, yeah Twin Turbo V8 got about yeah. four. 400 horsepower and i live in Wa washington dc so on average yeah. i get about 13 miles per gallon <laughs> oh in the my city. gosh oh to be young oh to be young and care and premium premium yeah oh premium. and let's not forget it's a drop top too so. <laughs> yeah yeah so it, awesome car but expensive to maintain ex expensive yeah. to maintain and, for sure and it's uh it's a very finicky car you know i have a pretty deep background in bmw as well and you know, lights, lots of, what was it? You were, you were happy for, for once that you didn't have a check engine light cause you, you yeah. took care of, uh, you took care of your coil pack or something like that. Right? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Since I bought it every time there was something <laughs> wrong with it and I was just, I'm just going to keep driving it. And I was like, it's, it's time to get it fixed. He literally, know, so. had, he literally had to fix it one time yeah. because I think you pop, popped a tire or a rim so you couldn't drive it so therefore you had to take care of that yep. and then when the coil pack went your car was like limping so you can you had to get that you were shaking when i was driving yeah it was a little, so you, little bit scary have you ever ridden in his bmw <laughs> you turn it yeah on? he has actually it, i, I it, drove it, looks, it on to yeah. it looks like the opening credits of a movie of all these uh, codes that are coming up and check warning, engine warning warning yes yeah. yes bmws uh, I, and bws that's how right? they w <laughs> that's just how they are you that, know, that's how it welcomes me. That's all that is. Speaking about social media, there's always uh, lots of memes on BM BMWs. You know that there's always lights and that they're in and out of the shops. And I never believed it until I actually got one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. There's some truth. We, to memes. we love our BMWs, but they have a unique personality that yeah. we we've uh, learned to love. Yeah. Uh, for me, I kind of a car thing, and and, and this has to do with. Uh, uh, I, my family and I went to visit my father and surprised him with a uh, surprise 70th uh, birthday party. And it was uh, nice. being the, his 70th, and our family's a big disco, you know, disco fans. We did like a disco theme. Oh, boy. And, uh, keeping, keeping a surprise from my father is very hard. He's always said he hates surprises. If you're, if you're listening, you're going to wish you were uh, <laughs> watching on YouTube right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, our family went all out, definitely with the, the the glitter and the lights and the 70s clothes. It was a lot of fun. Um, but more importantly, it's so hard to keep a secret in my family. But uh, we were able to truly surprise him. And um, he was actually kind of grumpy the day of his surprise because the, the ruse was um, my stepmom was baking a cake for someone to get paid and um, they were going to go to that that um, that that party his birthday wasn't till sunday but you know this was a par party on saturday so all day he was kind of cranky and he admitted it he's like he's like i can't believe my birthday is tomorrow and my wife is spending you know all day friday and saturday <laughs> baking a birthday cake for someone else right but really it was for him and um you know i think he uh, shed a, a tear or two all of his friends came um, it was a lot of fun, but car, car wise, we, we, we printed up some photos. That's my dad with his 68 Firebird, big block Firebird convertible, which he eventually sold because I came along and he really couldn't afford new tires for the Firebird. So he went from that amazing car to unfortunately a Pinto. <laughs> that hey, was, that, some people like Pintos. So the cost of the birth cars. back then was the same cost of a set of tires? Like, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. He was like, I can't afford tires, sell the car, get a Pinto, and and uh, 
then 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 it was a long road before he got anything cool. Um, but speaking of cool cars, what he does have out there in the car that I get, did get to drive over the weekend um, was his 1995 S500, and it has the um, I, I don't know. We, I, don't, it's, I don't know if it's technically the bulletproof package. That's the one I wrote in, right? Yeah, yeah. that thing. Oh, my gosh. You feel like a diplomat right in the You feel like though, a yeah. diplomat. It's got double-paned glass. It's like a vault. It just, oh, man. These older cars, I haven't, you know, we drive a lot of older cars, but I haven't driven an older Mercedes in a while, and that thing is like a vault. Yeah. You just roll down the road. You don't hear anything, and it's so smooth, a big old V8. and yeah. So that was kind of cool, just kind of rolling around in Vegas. Uh, in his black S500. So nice. Hey, we, we were just talking about tires, and I have to mention this because I, I feel so good about myself. I um, mean, <laughs> I want to share this with with all of you uh, <laughs> listeners, and, and this is a true insider tip right here. Go to Walmart.com and look for the tires you want. Don't go to Tire Rack right now because Walmart has a lot of stuff on sale. So he just pissed off some sponsors. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> yeah, kidding. Right. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. I mean, Yokohama, Pirelli. I mean, Walmart has. You do know that Tire Rack is one of our big sponsors, right? Yeah, I love Tire Rack. I always go to Tire Rack. <laughs> good answer. Good answer. No, I love Tire Rack. No, but a good deal is a good deal. I a totally deal, understand. Exactly. A good deal is a good deal. In fact, we live close enough to Tire Rack where we can drive to Delaware in an hour and no sales tax. They give you forty percent discount to pick them up yourself. Just about. Twenty dollars in tolls. Yeah. Oh, it, if that, yeah. if that, it's still way. But you cheaper. know what though? It's way that's cheaper. that's a good lead. On uh, there are some amazing deals uh, on Walmart.com, which I need yeah. to send that link or tell my dad because I think the tires on that S five hundred because it's yeah. got no miles, but I think it's like fifteen year old tires. Yeah. They are old tires. Yeah. So I was like, Dad, you live in Vegas where the heat, you know, is going to get to hundred degrees, and these tires are old. If they pop, you're going to mess up. You know, a yeah. body panel or something. I like that. the yeah. brand names they carry. What do they carry? Waterfall. Do they carry Vermicelli tires? Waterfall. Walmart. Uh, Douglas. Yeah. Douglas. Um, well, I'll just say that Tire Rack. Full way. Full better way. Better than halfway, I guess. <laughs> I was going to say Tire Rack had, had the Kumo V730s that I bought a month or two ago. Now yeah. they only have one left in stock. So I just went to Walmart to check it out because I think everybody who's autocrossing is starting to buy tires for the new season oh. um, but walmart still has a bunch in stock and i think they're trying to, to clear out things for the wow. new set of tires that's a nice so, insider tip yeah, go, go. go to walmart right now because Ver- Ver- really Vercelli good deals on tires stratas. Vercelli stratas 235 45 18 88 dollars 61 cents we know somebody that has Ver- vermicelli tires <laughs> does he still have them or did he get rid of them i don't know i don't know let's not yeah. let's anyway that, that was a weird tangent but it's too good to uh not say it <laughs> All right, so let's move into Bogdan's world. He is, uh, like I said, the, the newest member here at PCA National, and he's handling everything social media. So if you've been on PCAs, especially on our Instagram page, you've definitely noticed a difference. And congratulations to a very, very strong start. Well, thank you so much, Wu. It has certainly been a le- learning process. You know, I've been a car fan for as long as I can remember, but you know, as my I, I do not know about the Porsche as much as you guys. So just wanted to say thank you guys for teaching me, show, showing me the ropes, and we're currently testing some di- different content types on Instagram, and people are responding very, very well. Yep. You know, and we're reaching, it's unbelievable because we're reaching millions of people, and it's just so good to share the love of Porsche. So let's just start. Much like myself, you have a very exotic accent. <laughs> <laughs> where's that? <laughs> Manny, where's that from? Uh, You're Southern I'm Baltimore. <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> uh, I'm originally from Ukraine, Crimea, which is used to be part of Ukraine. Now it's part of Russia. Uh, I moved to USA about eight years ago. Oh wow! You know, yeah. Fortunately, I was I was adopted by a lovely American family, and you know, if the American dream is real, I'm definitely living it right now. That's, that's for fantastic. sure. That's fantastic. And so, you and you settled in what part of the country? Uh, first in North Carolina, Raleigh. You have that accent, don't you? A little bit. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit twang. <laughs> the, ra- the Southern Raleigh accent. Yeah. Yeah, so I moved here when I, when I was 17. So yeah. I basically had to learn English from scratch. I did not know how to say anything. I moved here in May 31st, and I started high school um, 
August 16th, I believe. Yeah. So I had roughly like two months to learn yeah. all the basics. And you know, I gotta say, first year of high school, I was just sitting there and nodding, waving and smiling. <laughs> That's, I mean, much respect to you. Uh, actually, uh, uh, on Sunday, we sat around the, uh, the, the, the table with my family and my dad was telling stories of when they came over from Vietnam um, and the, most of the family coming over uh, you know right before the fall of Saigon and you know they were older and some were younger but I mean for you to leave your homeland at 17 to come to the United States not speaking the language dude kudos to you like that what what was that even like, like I, I can't even imagine what that is like like if you told me to pick up right now and go to a country where I don't speak anything like what 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 were you what was going through your head like this there's a, there's this there's this you know pot of gold at the end of the rainbow or do you just want to you know what was it that drove you to come here yeah that's a great question and you know hollywood is very very famous in ukraine russia you know because ukraine is a great country but uh i gotta be honest with you guys they do not make great movies so growing up <laughs> I, <laughs> growing up i would always watch hollywood movies and it just seems so cool just the thought of america is just everybody's just so excited about it yeah you know and thankfully uh, i was able to come visit america through a host family mm -hmm. so i was here for like one month and Oh boy, everything I saw on TV <laughs> was real, you know? Uh, we're sorry. Are you, are you watching Duck Dynasty? Or? When you go to the fast food restaurant yeah. and you buy a soda, I could not believe that you could refill it. That was, a, <laughs> that was the craziest thing The simplest things, right? The simplest, simplest the thing, simplest and thing. it was such a pleasure. Yeah. Well, to be honest with you, the Germans are also very impressed yeah. that we have free refills here. That's what they told me. That, yeah. uh, they could just go back up themselves and refill it. That was, so uh, so new. we have family uh, still back in Vietnam and, you know, they're doing very well in Vietnam, but they come over and they visit. And there's little things like what you were just talking about, like a refilling your soda is so like abstract to them. And we thought we're going to blow their minds. We're going to take them to Costco. And we walked into <laughs> Costco and they were just looking like, my God, what is this place? And why is there so much to buy and so cheap? And then they're like, so you just walk up and grab samples? <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. Hot dogs and a soda, only a dollar fifty. Yeah, a hot dog and a soda. <laughs> yeah, that that's a very common thing in Ukraine too, because we have lots and lots of small shops. Yeah. Uh, but not a lot of big stores. So Casca is like a big, big example of that for sure. Yeah. You know, my parents came over in '65. <clears throat> they were, uh, I think, my mother was 19, my dad was like 24, and but uh, my mother always. Uh, stuck in her head she said was in the united states on the highways they let you know like over a mile away that there's going to be construction there's signs or warning he said in ecuador where they came from you wouldn't find out construction until you came onto the construction <laughs> right on the highway but here <laughs> when you're in the hole that they dug <laughs> yeah but they, they, they've been here since 65 and she loves this country this is her country now you know yeah. she doesn't uh, have any desire ever to go back to ecuador uh, but little things like that to her is what she always thought America was. Yeah, and I, I think that's, you know, obviously there's crazy things going on in, in America, but you think, you, you take a step back, especially when someone like yourself or like my relatives that come over, man, what a great country that we have. And yeah, we have our issues, but if you look at it in totality, man, uh, it's so we amazing. We have it pretty good. We have it pretty darn yeah, good. Yeah, you know, one thing I found really cool is to have that perspective, you know, because, you know, as you said, we explained it perfectly, you know, there's, of course, every country has its own issues, but, you know, having that perspective coming from Ukraine, from Eastern Europe, it, it's definitely a big, big difference for sure. And, uh, and opportunities, right? You, you come, you learned English, you sort of got yourself in the lane, and we'll talk about how you got into social media. Uh, but you have that drive, right? You have that drive that you want to be able to make the most of this opp opportunity that's been presented to you. And it's clear. We totally see it, and that's why we brought you on. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. So that. how did you embrace, uh, uh, because there's people in our country that were born here that, uh, I mean, just months ago, didn't know how to do a reel on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> why are you looking at me? Why are you looking at me? <laughs> so is Instagram something you were, you were using in Ukraine or... Crimea before you came over here or is this something you embraced when you came here? 
Okay, so here's a quick funny story. Ukraine is about, I would say, about 10 years behind in te te technology. So while America had social media for years, Ukraine was just getting into it. MySpace. Uh, <laughs> My face. It's called VK, it's more like an Eastern Europe social media, but uh, as, soo as soon as I moved to America, I started going to high school, and my senior year, I really wanted to take weight training classes, you know, just get big muscles, impress girls, all that good <laughs> stuff. But my mom told me, she was like, no, you're not taking that class, you're gonna get an internship uh -huh. uh, with the local chamber of commerce. And I was like, I'm gonna work for free, but you know, okay, whatever. You know, I tried to argue with her, but you know, from from listen the yes, to mama. I learned. Always yeah, listen, listen to, to mama. mama. Always listen to yeah, mama. Yeah, so I got an internship, and after working there for about two months, they offered me a paid position. You know, as mm -hmm. coming in as a younger guy, still still in high school, I got all the social media duties. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I started working in it, I just fell fell in love with it. It's just such a cool space to be in because you know. And when, while I was in Ukraine, I've always had a passion for marketing. I did not know what, what marketing meant, but I always found commercials really fascinating. It would just be excited to watch it. So uh, I've started in high school and then, you know, throughout college, I had different internships, jobs, and just stay in that industry. And it's just so far, it's been a dream come true because, you know, I'm fortunate enough to say that I love my job. You know, it's just mm -hmm. because social media is fun, content creation is fun, and Porsche, it's even more fun. And you just combine all these things to, 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 to get together and it's just absolute pleasure. Now in your in your interview, we, we vet very comprehensively uh, when we are considering folks that come through. We have a PCA. scratch off card. We decided <laughs> we're gonna hire. <laughs> and we came across, you also had another dream that was part of a video that you did and it was almost like an audition video. <laughs> I can't believe you guys saw that. So for the, for, for, for the people who are listening. You don't know about this one? I don't, I don't think I do. We, I thought that's why we hired them. <laughs> so <laughs> I got onto American Ninja Warrior. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen it. You haven't seen this no, video? No, nobody oh. told me about this. Did you think you were, you're joining the army? Did, did you understand what it was? <laughs> he, is just, he was just uh, tossing out all sorts of like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. American Ninja Warrior. I'm going to do this. And we're just like, that's this awesome. dude's all over the place. Um, yeah, absolutely. But basically, I made a video. I got in on the show. I was so excited about it. And then COVID happened. But you I, got on, though. You got... I got accepted, but yeah. I was supposed to compete in April. And COVID started around oh. March. Oh. And then they said they I'm going to ha have a spot next year. And then it was just COVID was going on for about two and years. they're like, eh, yeah. whatever. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll come back when we do. That's all right. You got the That's PCA cool. dream now. Yeah, I got a PCA <laughs> dream right now. Exactly. So speaking of dreams, uh, we already talked about you know your BMW, but uh, now that you've been around us for a couple of months, do you have a uh, an idea of what Porsche you might want to have one day? Absolutely. And you know, do, during my interview with Miss Laura, and we're talking about Porsches, and I said, unfortunately, I don't, I don't have one right now. And, you know, but I did express that I'd always have passion for it. And she said that, you know, some people drive Porsches here, some are not, but everybody just falls in love with it. And I was like, you know, I like Porsche, but it's not like love or die. But after looking at Porsches <laughs> all day, almost literally 24-7, it's just, it's just so fascinating for me. And, you know, I'm going to be really cliche here, um, but... I there love is no substitute. <laughs> 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 I love. Well, here, it. here's the thing. Before you tell us what it is, he sits right next to Damon. I'm just wondering if Damon's love for certain Porsches have rubbed off on you. So, anyways, okay. go ahead. Oh, you know, the, the Porsche you want is a 2007 Cayman with okay. a five-speed oh and Olin. It's here. the only Porsche he's gotten a ride in yet. I think. Here he goes. Here he goes. <laughs> Um, Despite that, what is your favorite Porsche? Okay, so I'm more of an artistic person and I just love the design. I view cars as more of art, not just transportation. And when Porsche came out with the bar tail lights, for me, it was the coolest thing ever. Mm. So I would have to go with one of the newer 992. Really? Uh, I mean, GTI. Uh, 
GT3 would be an absolute dream, but I heard that those are very limited right now. Uh, just a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Allocations are a little bit scarce. Yeah. But it's interesting that you're focusing in on, like when we think of the, let's say a 911 or any, any Porsche, as far as the artistic side, we usually think of the silhouette and the profile. But from his perspective, he's really drawn into the bar light across the back, which I, which more recently has been like a highlight for Porsche. But that's, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. hmm. When I was your age, it was which one does the girls like? <laughs> that was the uh, motivating. Uh, that, that's well, why I got never, the BMW. Ne <laughs> never, <laughs> never buy a vehicle because you think you're going to attract someone else with it. If you want to do that, the best way is just to get a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You know, we uh, Porsches did have a, a bar light of sorts, nine six fours all across the back. Although, yes. the, although the center wasn't lit up. Right, it was just the, right. the clear red. Right, 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 right. Yeah, but, yeah, but sort of halfway sort there. Of. Yeah, yeah. But the, nine, nine, the 944, 924 had that aftermarket insert. The yes. aftermarket one, and that yeah. that made it, the lights all light up. Right. And I had that on my 81 924. And I remember people that did those back in the 80s, and then as you got into like the 2000s when those cars were being purchased and people were taking them off, putting them back to original, I didn't realize those were like, you had to drill through mm -hmm. those panels to, to run the wires. Run, run wires and stuff. So you like, you ruined, well, maybe ruined is a strong word, but yeah. you had to modify your vehicle yeah. structurally to, to get those mounted. Yeah, yeah. All right, so um, we're obviously in, in, in your world, in social media, and the word viral comes up a lot. And I think part of why you're so interested in social media is like you love sort of like the hunt of, um, you know, what's what's going on, what's popular and trying to sort of translate that and put it into the PCA Porsche world so that we hopefully post something that goes viral. So walk, walk, walk through for our listeners kind of your mindset of how you, how you get that done. Absolutely. So and. You know, there's lots of different ways to go viral. I'd like to go back to, you know, just having original great content. And funny enough, uh, we posted one video that pretty close to getting viral. I think with our audience, I would say over a million views, it's uh, viral. Mm -hmm. A um, few weeks back, Manny and I, uh, I saw this cool idea on Instagram. It was basically a trend, and that's about going viral. What I try to do is soon I see a trend in the, trend in the car community, I try to do my best to make something similar and post it while it's still pop popular. And I saw this trend um, where phone uh, is glitching, acting up, and buying a car just by itself. So I asked Manny uh, to go help me film it, and we went to the girls' bathroom because they had a mirror in the right place, and we filmed that reel. I kept on thinking, Miss Laura walks in here. <laughs> Here's an HR <laughs> issue coming. <laughs> I'm holding a camera. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so Robert is showing it right now. Yeah, if it's you're watching on YouTube, yeah. Something very, very simple, but right now I believe it has over 600,000 views. And then I also added a joke in the end, you know, just uh, doing something like that. And I wish there was the um, hack to go viral. I wish, you know, it, there, there was a formula, but unfortunately there is not. It's just you just have to try your best and you just know always be online, look for trends and also provide. So for me, what I'm trying to do through PCA accounts is actually provide value to our fans and members. You know, I want them to learn something. I want them to laugh and just actually have a good experience and connect with us through our platforms. Yeah, and so, you know, having you uh, on board is a, a breath of fresh air and you're studying all these different trends. And for the, 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 the post that he's talking about, Again, if you're not able to see it on uh, YouTube and you're just listening to us, it's basically he has a phone on a sink and when he washes his hands, it's like sp splatters water on the phone and then the phone goes and starts to like buy a car, right? And he just kind of flips out. It's 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 fun, it's, it's lighthearted. Honestly, when you first showed it to me, I'm like, okay, it's kind of funny, but like, like how do you, like I had no idea that it would had viral potential, right? But you know, this is where, you know, we brought him in we want to try new things. You know, there's no surprise that the, the the average age on Instagram and the type of content that does well on Instagram is very different from maybe 
uh, more of our traditional means of communicating PCA and Porsche stuff. So I'm like, dude, if this is what you think is going to trend well, if this is, you know, it's funny and also it still stays true to our brand, PCA brand, go for it. And it's amazing things like that. Again, I, I, this is why I lose when I'm in Vegas is like, I wouldn't have bet, you know, too much on it, but I wanted to see how it would do. And you did a fantastic job. And the an, another one that you did recently. Now this one I thought would do well um, because, but it was uh, the ones where you featured uh, Joey Tribbiani and friends, and saying you know saying the word Porsche. Well, that's I think in the more traditionalist PCA world, we all know that that clip. We think it's funny, but we've never thought about harvesting, you know, the power of that clip and using it for our own. Um, you know, Instagram and, and whatever, whatever. And you put together that little that little bit and it also did very well, right? That one is, I believe, around 585,000 views, which is also really close to getting viral. And that's why a few years ago, the entire so social media platforms changed when the t TikTok first announced. Yeah. Before to reach um, 500,000 people, you would have to spend a lot of money to add revenue. Mm -hmm. But right, right now, the way algorithm works, you, you can actually reach a lot of people for free if your content is good, interesting, funny, educational. So, and when TikTok was first announced, then Instagram adopted Reels. Now we also have YouTube Shorts. Now you can also post Reels on Facebook. And it's just, I do love this trend of, you know, pr producing short, interesting videos. Mm -hmm. It's just, and I've been recently trying to balance it out on Instagram. Uh, Robert, if you want to show some carousel posts we've been making and they perform very well. Thank you guys so much uh, for those of you who follow us on social media for, for being so patient with me. Carousel posts are where it's not a, it's not a reel, it's uh, basically different slides. Yeah, the photos, yeah. the slides, like the 911 Dakar slide, I believe. If you saw that up for a little bit. And five we, interesting facts. Yeah, yeah, so five interesting sure. facts of the 911. Uh, um, so you scroll it at your own yeah. pace, if you will. Yeah, and I love these too. I mean, you know, I, much like you know when we first started podcasts like i really wasn't into podcasts i you know i people would send me instagram things and i would look at them but i was not really actively in instagram and you know we yeah but considering i sent you a message two weeks ago it is still unread <laughs> on instagram on instagram i know, yeah, yeah. I know yeah. well you did you did actually i think my sister found it because she was like you need to look at this i'm like oh man he sent me something if you sent me a message on instagram eight years ago i still haven't read it yeah <laughs> but see here's the thing here's the thing is here's another viable channel for us to get pca and porsche information out and you know before bogdan you know we kind of we, 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 we maintained it, but we didn't have a lot of effort because we, we have all these other things going on. Mm -hmm. And then Manny was kind of joking aside, you know, he was he was like, let's try doing these reels thing. And I happened to like taking videos and, and such. So we tried doing reels and all of a sudden I was the reels guy on Instagram. But really it was not, you know, there was no strategy to it other than the fact that we were going places and we would have access to cool mm -hmm content or cool cars or cool whatever and we would just figured hey maybe we'll yeah. share this in the past our, our facebook a little bit less on instagram um and also twitter to a certain extent was about and those were accounts that i would run since 2014 is more about sharing the content that was on pca.org or mm -hmm. on our youtube channel yep. you wouldn't find a lot of um uh, exclusive or original content on on our social media channels Instagram got a little bit closer, um, but again, that was, I just go through my photos and share photos that were cool that I took at an events you yeah. know, prior, and you know, uh, we, we, we can knew, only get so far with right. that. Yeah, we knew we so. had to do it, and we, mm -hmm. we, we would try to push stuff over there, but mm -hmm. the approach now is much different, right? So now, now when we have a certain topic or an event, now we're going to, to Manny, you know, what's the technical part of this thing that we're doing, and then, with Bogdan, we're going, what's the social media you can pick up? And then with Damon, what's on digital? What's uh, YouTube that we could possibly come with? And then, of course, with Rob uh, Sass, you know, is there a piece of this that will be, you know, for Porsche Panorama? So we have a collection of folks looking at an event or looking at a topic and seeing how we can maximize and get it through our multiple channels. Because, uh, you know, PCA members, they consume, you know, our information 
you know, they, some may have a favorite. Some may just only listen to our podcast. Some may only read Pano. Some may only, you know, our I, our our goal is that they enjoy and consume across all of our channels. But we don't know that, right? So we just kind of now have the ability to push this information through a lot. And and they're actually unique pieces, right? So whatever Manny's going to talk about on the tech side is going to be different than what's going to be in Pano or what you're going to do in the video or what Bogdan's going to do in social media. So I love it. I think this mm -hmm. is. For, for me, having so many people, um, you know, and we, we've, we've even focused on having, you know, content meetings weekly, like, I think we're ready to put it, like, up a next gear with all this stuff. One of yep. the things that I would, uh, or listeners who may not be on Instagram, who, who are scarred from Facebook social media, uh, <clears throat> that's what was happening to me, was uh, Facebook was becoming too political. Yeah. And uh, whether I try, as much as I try to keep those posts out of my feed, it was impossible. But I discovered when I discovered Instagram years ago, I discovered that I could really tailor it to what I wanted to see, which was pictures of Porsches and old Volkswagens. So uh, I started following people, and I would see what they would, what their um, their uh, postings were. And if it was all cars, I would follow them. Mm -hmm. If it had other stuff on it, I just didn't follow them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now on Instagram, when I scroll, it's just pictures of what I want to see. No political posts. No family post <laughs> I just want right. to see cards <laughs> and, and, the, and, the, uh, and the platform doesn't push things to you that you don't no, want to nope. see right? it's just so. uh just uh car stuff so it, I would, would tell my friends I would like you know you can get Instagram you get great pictures without all the BS yeah and uh so now you know I'll cross post stuff to my Facebook but um I rarely go to Facebook everything's on Instagram for me all right, so let's get into some Porsche news. Uh, the very first one, the V8 is back, at least for the Cayenne S. Yeah, yeah. I, I keep getting confused with this because I know the the originals had V8s. Mm -hmm. Then it was everything was a V6 except for the turbo, and then I thought that it was V8s except for the base model, starting with what a, a couple of years ago. But apparently the S was still a V6. The GTS twin, has a V8. Twin turbo V6. Yeah, twin turbo. Mm -hmm. So. So now the S has the V a V8 now again. Now the S has the V8 again. Wow. And what's funny is I I cannot say that I've driven the V6 twin turbo Cayenne. I haven't driven a, a modern one other than the the GT. Yeah, we've gotten the GTS, which is the V8 lately, and yeah. the Turbo GT. But yeah. we we haven't driven a V6. I would Cayenne. like to drive one. So if you have yeah. uh, if you have a twin turbo V6 Cayenne and would like to have us do a one mile review i'd like to just see the difference yeah and this would yeah. be what a 20 like 12 or 13 through 2018 or 19 mm -hmm. i think yeah an s with the v6 uh let's see and they're also that that model's getting it's not a new gen it's like a facelift right so new mm -hmm. little, little tweaks to the front end you know body you know, body pieces and such just a, a freshen up it still looks good and yeah. for me i think you know the Macan. You, you mentioned earlier that we got to test drive the Macan S, uh, Paul Gentili's Macan S, and that is a sweet ride. But for someone, you know, that car really is for couples and maybe young kids. But I think bang for the buck, a Cayenne um, really is a better value for someone that has like a true, you know, family, and uh, and also if they want to occasionally. You know, tow or something yeah. that has like you know seventy five. I think seventy five hundred thousand, seventy five hundred pound yeah. towing capacity. Um, even my 06 Cayenne is fantastic yeah. for taking the family. Yeah. A lot of room. You know what towing. my girlfriend said? What's that? It would be nice to have a Cayenne. As a Whoa, dude, that's. I, like, thought you're gonna oh, say, yeah. I thought you were gonna say. Yeah. I thought you were gonna say it'd be nice to have a family. Have a family. No. <laughs> that's what I thought well, you were gonna no, say. No, no. <laughs> well, I think that's what she's saying. I mean, when she's saying she wants a Cayenne, no, no, she's no, also no. saying she, she's saying she wants to be able to tow a race car with a Porsche. I don't know. Look, 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 we got to uh, decode for for Damon what a woman's saying. We got to de yeah. <laughs> decode for Damon. Oh God. You know what though? It's we we love we love our Cayenne, especially. Um, you know, in the in the winter, with I think I mentioned it before, with with uh, winter tires, that thing is unstoppable, unstoppable. I saw in a Porsche newsroom, was it a Macan or a Cayenne towing a plane? I was a Cayenne. Cayenne, Cayenne. definitely Cayenne. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Cayenne. Oh, that was old school. That was from um, like ten years ago. Now? Yeah, it's funny having but, him here because. Yeah. Things that he <laughs> notices and what we know and sort of the time difference. Because you literally came up to me with that friend's 
Instagram hey thing. Hey guys, that you could... have you ever heard of this show called <laughs> Friends, Friends from a long time ago? <laughs> I'm like, I kind of wanted to smack just him. Watched it. I, I like just watched it. <laughs> Do you know the show Friends? <laughs> well, you're on the right track. You're, you're watching the right shows. You're watching yeah. the right. Wait till you discover yeah, Gilligan's just, Island. Just be careful in making us feel What's that? old. No, I'm just kidding. I know what that is. I've never watched it though. So what? Gilligan's Island. Oh my god, it's a little bit too far back. Yeah. All right, so here's uh, the next Porsche news item. More rumors around Porsche F1. <laughs> they, someone really wants this to happen. I wonder how long it'll it'll uh, go on for. Uh, so uh, I read this on Reddit, and and I love Reddit because I swear I, stuff I read on there hits the mainstream news like a day later, and that's what happened here too. I saw a uh, p- postings where uh, someone was claiming that they really analyzed the. Um, the Porsche postings on Instagram, and there was like little hints oh that, they, that they were going to go to Williams oh F1. They're, and they're so fine. then it just went, uh, it spread around the internet that uh, Porsche was going to make this big announcement, and the announcement was probably going to be that they're teaming up with Williams to the point where Williams actually issued a statement saying they were not for sale. So there, yeah. there are conspiracy theories now, of course, circling or around. People are like digging Williams for Easter eggs. And, they're looking oh for Easter gosh. eggs. And, yeah, it's uh, and. Who knows? I mean, uh, how many times have uh, in motorsports that people denied something and then the next day it actually happens? No, oh. so this is it, starting to feel like the Da Vinci Code. And I was just watching uh, Angels and Demons last night. And I'm you like, just watch that? Yeah. Oh, my oh it's a good yeah, one. It is a good one. Wow. So speaking of F1, I got to give them props to while I was in Vegas with my family, who most of my family is not really into motorsports, but. I can't tell you how many of them came up and said, are you going to be here for the F1? Because I hear it's going to be really big. And can we get tickets? Do you have access to tickets to F1? I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> but they all know about it. And they're all super excited. They're like, so so what do we need to know? What are we going to do? And yeah. And I said, you're asking the wrong person because I'm also not very. Uh, <laughs> tell them to buy a really big TV. Big TV. And enjoy it at home. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you got to go at least go down there and be in the middle of all the chaos. I think that would be pretty cool. They have they they have connections you know, at certain hotels and hopefully one of their hotel friends will be able to. Could you imagine being like at in one of the the taller hotels and kind of looking down on oh, the wow. race? How cool would that be? That would be great. I, I and there's a lot of those types of rooms, right? That's oh, good oh. for a couple laps. I don't yeah, know, a whole race. I would. Uh, enjoy personally, it. best rate, uh, F1 uh, way to watch an F1 race, I think, would be to get one of those prime rooms at the Monaco Grand Prix. So that you have your TV right here, and then you can just step out on your balcony. Oh and yeah, watch. absolutely. And, and that would be the come best through, for sure. For sure, that would be the best. I'm sure Vegas is probably making as many of those rooms yep. possible in preparation for the race. But I would like to watch it. I've, already, I've watched the F1 race several times at Dakota, but where I would like to watch it is the first time we went there, and I think it's still like this. They have open seating right at the uh, hairpin before the, the back straight. Mm-hmm. It's all on a hill. It's mm-hmm. grassy seating, and I thought. This is like prime spot because the cars are coming around slow. Yeah. So you get to see them closely, and then they rock, rock it down off, the straight. Yeah. Uh, and you just bring a blanket or something, and you can uh, no need. It, it seemed to be better seating than we were sitting by, uh, I guess, um, at the end of the back straight. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you don't want to turn. sit somewhere there where they're just going to fly by you at, you know, however. No, at Indianapolis, we, the first time we went, we sat at uh, start finish. Yeah, and that was they just blow by. Me, I remember Bob yeah. said, "We got the best seats." Yeah, and I like turn one. He goes, "No, start finish." I'm like, "How do you get the best seats?" <laughs> he goes, "We get to watch them start." I'm like, "Well, that's great." After two seconds, what, what do we do <laughs> then? And we watched the rest of the race, looking across the screen at the race because the cars went by so freaking fast. You just saw blurs go by. So the next news item we have is uh, back on. Is we talked about this a few episodes ago. The 911 ST. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's uh, I. So the question I'm wondering is when do they de- debut it? Do they wait, wait for Rensport? Where do they debut this car? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's uh, more and more information is leaking out on it that it's basically a GT3 RS uh, touring essentially, but later weight. Um, yeah, it, it's I, I can't wait for it to come out and the real, what the real uh, specs on it. Yeah, well, you can see some of those uh, aero. Um, details there. It's not all the same. I'm, I've, I've got to think that they can't go as far as they did with the GT3 RS. The, the, the GT3 RS, their big thing is the arrow. Right. Yeah. And, this, so, uh, this, and is this has less arrow. Less arrow. Still more than the old GT3 Tourings, or the current one, I should say. Mm. Yeah, that's well, You see the heritage uh, 
oh, yeah, circle the in the back. It's funny they have to test that. That's part of the whole engineering. Yeah, they, they don't even they don't just screw something onto the uh, the engine lid cover. They they test it. They put it through the wind tunnel and make sure that the engine's getting all the air it needs. Yeah, we learned that at parade when Boris gave his presentation about how that was. Uh, they had to, like Damon said they had to test it because mm -hmm. it's part of the yeah, car. It's got a part number. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> all right, and the last one is actually um, I think it was in the video where we had with Michael Maurer, one of the comments was, you know, in terms of um, lower inventory in 2022 and possibly in 2023, uh, here we, we have a link, uh, autoblog link talking about 2022 sales record. Yeah, they, they squeaked by, but they had more sales. By like 40 cars or something. Yeah, like that, yeah right? even with all the uh, supply issue problems. And unsurprisingly, the Macan still the best-selling car. Yeah. Yeah. They have followed by the Cayenne again. Yeah. But what I thought was interesting further down the line was the 718 Boxster Cayman, uh, which came in at 34, almost 3,500 cars. I don't understand why people don't buy those. Well, here's, here's, I, I looked at it and I said, so in 20 years when people are looking for these cars. Oh, my gosh. And they're like, yeah. why was there so few? Mm -hmm. It's just the same way with the 964s when people say, I can't find a 964 for sale. Well, they didn't make a lot because they weren't selling a lot. Right. Yeah. And this, uh, I think, will be the same thing with the Boxster Cayman. Yep. What people will be saying, but these cars are so much fun, but I can't find one anything anywhere. Yeah. I only find is Macans and Cayennes. <laughs> yeah, right, and right. Because it, it wasn't, uh, but it's been that, that way for a while. Yeah, Boxers and Caymans just, they don't sell. Like the 911, well, which they, is surprising. They, well, it's also been a while since their 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 latest model, right? Like, yeah, they're, but, due, but they're even, due for a refresh. But even right? when it was new, the yeah. 718, and I want to say even the 981 never performed like the 986 did. Um, it has never really performed as well as the 911. I'll like, tell you what, though. If you drive a 718, it's an yeah. amazing But if you look at the 986s, car. after initial launch, they also dropped. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I think this, this uh, is more, t what I look at it as, if Porsche had stayed just a sports car company, mm -hmm. this is the type of volumes, this right. is the problems they ran into with, right. when yep. they were just making sports cars. Uh, so now these four doors are basically keeping the company running. Sure. It allows them to race at Le Mans, allows them to build these really cool cars, but the bread and butter are the four doors. Yep. Yep. And, and God bless that they do so well with the four doors because that uh, they can still build the sports cars. Right, and, th and think of, the average consumer, even if they're an enthusiast, you know, buying buying a two door, two door, two passenger or two two seater, that's a pretty luxurious purchase, right? Like, like are a lot of people looking for something like that, or are they are they they feel like it's a more sensible purchase to buy? Uh, you know, a Macan that is more utilitarian and can seat four. So I'm, I, I totally get why the volumes are the way they are. Yeah, I, I understand Macan and Cayenne. Um, it's surprising to see the 911 beating the Taycan by what two or three thousand units. It looks well, the, like the 911 is so. just iconic. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, for a while the Taycan was beating it, but the Taycan they make a lot more variations than the 911. 911. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can't find something you like in a 911, then yeah. you're way too picky. Yeah. yeah. What is it? Thirty-four variations or something, something like that. Like they that. Have. So a here's lot. here's something that I was trying to dig for and I couldn't find, and 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 this relates to the limited supply. So the overall sales record in 2022, what was the volume of cars sold in 2019 before the pandemic and before yeah. before the um, uh, supply chain issue? So the question is. What did they sell more cars in 2019 than they did in 2022? No, this is a question for Google. Google in portion, yeah. So, okay. in so what was it? And that's for that's all wide. vehicles. All vehicles. So for PCNA, it was 61,568. 61,000? Yeah, 61,568. In 2019. Yeah. So, what, so what do they even, even with the that was supply a record. chain issue, they're still beating that. More. Yeah. So so sixty one thousand units sold in two thousand nineteen and how many sold in twenty twenty two? Seventy uh seventy oh two five. Seventy what? Seven oh no. Seventy thousand and sixty five. Okay, so 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 the comment that the the person had on, on the the Michael Maurer video is true. Like so you're talking about 
you hear about how there's less inventory and supply issues, but here the numbers show that they had more Porsches for sale in 2022 than they did in 2019. So you can kind of see why people are a little frustrated. <laughs> right. So the re- <laughs> well, remember, too, you, you, yeah. I think you had a, a bigger markets, too. China has become even bigger. Uh, the different markets are mm-hmm. just buying more cars and selling their and the, yeah. They're but selling more just, cars. This yeah. is but this is, this is just U.S. Oh, okay. So yeah, 61,000 in 2019 and 70,000 in 2022. Numbers show yeah. that there were more cars available yeah. and it wasn't less cars They could have available. sold more of these cars too. Well, I, I mean, yeah, I would agree that demand, you know, is over so what, what supply. What was the question? Well, the, well there, so we, Michael and others have said that there is a shortage of Porsches that's why the prices are the way that they are but if that was the case then why are, they technically have more they had more cars in 2022 than but they, they didn't have as much as they wanted to build it yeah so they could have done more <laughs> yeah. but but it still makes me it's, think it's like, so, chick, so, the chickens aren't making enough eggs for what people right are right so so yeah. demand is way over supply that's why there's yeah, a shortage sure. yeah, it's, that's, it's that's not that basic. they're not producing they're not producing they are producing more cars than they are in 2019. That's, I think, goes to a bigger picture, yeah. which I don't want to get into, but the whole economy, yeah. and yeah. inflation, and yeah. trying yeah. to slow things down. I was going to say, isn't that crazy that three years later and more poor demand is way more than it was? Right. Like that's, that blows my mind just on its yeah. own. I mean, yeah. At the so. end of the day, there's a certain supply amount, and if there's yep. more demand than supply, then guess what? Cars are going to be more expensive. Cars are going to... You know, there's going to be, um, and you just can't say, and, "We'll just build more," yeah, because that means uh, creating more manufacturing facilities, which yeah. costs money, all for that to fall apart. Yeah, and that's how bank companies go bankrupt because they invest so much into the uh, infrastructure, and then the you know, demand's now, not there anymore. Speaking of making more, I thought I read somewhere that Porsches were, was it Cayennes that were going to, or Macans that were going to be made in, like. Thailand or something like that? Did you guys read about that? Yes, I read about that. I want to say a few months ago. Yeah, or something. So is that so, exactly so is that live yet? And and I think those those vehicles are just going to be for that market. It's not like they're making them in Thailand or wherever it was uh, for other markets. Yeah, and I, I, I'm pretty. I did. I was starting to write an article about the different factories Porsche has around the around the world. Yeah, Malaysia. Nothing, it looks nothing like. new Malaysia? for them okay. to, uh, to be like. Well, my Boxster was built in Finland. Yeah, so it's. Uh, it's it's very it's it's not a big deal I think if they have these cars built in other countries because their um their standards are so high yeah. that it's uh not like uh yeah. they're just handing them uh, the parts and saying here build these cars yeah so th- the way I look at it is you know um years ago if somebody told me this part's made in China I'd be like Ooh, I don't know if I want to put that on my car now. Yeah. That is a positive in some uh, ways. I was, I was about to say, like, I mean, pretty much every car out there has parts yeah. from all sorts of different countries. Yeah. China's better but, at a but lot the, of things than we are. Of the yeah. cars. The assembly, yeah. Yeah. assembly. Like, like the 911s, uh, there's, it's their Zeker Cal, and I think mm-hmm. that will stay, that assembly mm-hmm. will stay in Germany. Yeah. Um, but uh, for the Ford orders, mm. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go into some recent videos that we've released. Yeah, so... We uh, recently had an Ellen Engineering tour, which you probably, I forget if you mentioned this in our last podcast, but that was a couple of weeks ago now, or a week and a half. Um, so if you want to see where some cool Porsche parts, especially if you own an air-cooled 911 or a water-cooled Porsche sports car, Boxster 911 came in from, from 97 to, to 2012, you've probably seen their parts uh, here and there, or if you've been looking for a car, their IMS bearing was used in a replacement, and that's something you always want to see when you're searching for a, a used Boxster, for example. We took a tour of their of their shop and, and got to see how they do everything, and wow, is it impressive. Yeah, it certainly is. And I love sort of these behind-the-scenes tours and seeing how, you know, the minions sort of make, make treasures, right? And yeah. uh, to see what started as a big pipe or a big, you know, slab of aluminum and then comes out into this beautifully yeah. crafted piece for a car yeah. engine. That's it's so funny because cool. you imagine that, you know, like it's going to be this huge facility just pumping out like mm-hmm. parts and parts and parts. Um, and it's not like it's no. a big facility, but right. it's, it's a, you know, it's a small business yeah. in the sense, yeah. you know, like what, 20 people work there, 30? Mm-hmm. 
Yep. So if it, very cool look at t- into Ellen Engineering. Um, we also, I got to review our ad director, Ilko Nechev's uh, 987 Boxer Spider, a 2011 model. It had been since 2011 or 2012 since I'd driven one. And um, what a car. It just, there's not, I don't think I've driven a Porsche that feels as comfortable to drive quickly as soon as you pull away in it. That is that is one of the easiest, mo- most natural cars to drive yeah, that, that Porsche has made. That car is distilled to just the bare essentials. Yeah. And it feels that way. And it's a lot of fun to drive. You know, it has that Jeep Wrangler type top. But I like that. I mean, I you know I used to have a Jeep Wrangler and I could drive it with just the top and no windows around it. And you know, as a daily driver, it's probably not sensible. But you know, as a as a weekend warrior type of car, that thing is awesome. Yeah, no, that that was a lot of fun, and I have to thank Ilko for for letting me drive it. Um, so check it out on our YouTube channel. We also have we just released um, yesterday, so we're recording on on a, a Wednesday right now, so we released yesterday on Tuesday Nathan Murr's latest video, which was a an hour and 34 minute model guide detailing everything you need to know about the 996 Turbo, which was the 2001 to 2005 911 Turbo, the first water-cooled 911 Turbo. And uh, if you are in the market for one of these cars, this is, if you were to watch or consume one piece of content about these cars to learn as much as you need to to buy one of them you this know, is be it. educated about it this is it this like, is it you can't go anywhere well, else nathan <laughs> again does a knowledge Although drop he got called out yeah not for flip-flops this time <laughs> uh, but for not having his uh, center caps i'll uh, point it to, pointed the, to yes the i saw that gosh i did see that yeah. but man what a knowledge drop as he always does and yeah. You know, this is for the vehicle that I still feel is one of the best buys out there, mm-hmm. the 996 Turbo, and um, everything you need to know in one video. And it's yeah. it may seem you know long as far as a, a normal video that we do, but it is an education like no yeah. other. We, we all watched it to see what can we cut out of here to make it a little bit more easier to chew. There was really There's, nothing to yeah. cut out. I it's all that information that you need. More entertaining than half the films on Netflix. This was 90 yeah. minutes long. <laughs> and I thought to myself, I actually was more entertaining than some. Yeah. You, you look on my Netflix, uh, continue watching. Yeah. It's about like 40 minutes in. And I'm like, yeah, this ain't worth the rest of my time. <laughs> but uh, the, the Nathan thing was very, uh, and, and I like to consider I know a lot about these cars. But uh, Nathan always manages to teach me something I didn't uh, realize about the cars. So, yep. so, so go, go check it out. All right, so speaking of Nathan, February 1st, he's going to be on Tech Tactics Live with a market update. Probably going to be another uh, stellar video uh, uh, show for yeah, us. Yeah, that's going to be right after Scottsdale. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be um, interesting from his take about the, and particularly what we, what we'd like to hear from him, we're going to show cars uh, that, what they look like uh, in the pictures and what he saw in reality. In real life, uh, what you know, mm-hmm. if these cars were properly rated and what they went for, yeah. and that's what he does as well. Just to, um, you know, uh, his his main business or one of one of his main business. I, the thing I know him uh, through is he's the owner of Columbia Va- Valley Luxury Cars, and um, so he sells um, and consigns. I believe really really nice Porsches. Usually, I think he does some other. He doesn't consign. There. He just buys and sells. He just buys and sells, yeah. mm-hmm. and. Um, so you know to get a handle on the market you know he's not going to these auctions necessarily to bid on a car he's going there to get a really close look at all the porsches that are there so he he's not relying on pictures which Mm -hmm. pictures don't tell the whole story yeah absolutely yeah watch that uh february 1st tech tactics live he knows what he's talking about what we also have out which i didn't list was uh, on your agenda thing is our uh most recent Tech Tactics Live, we went over national events. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was uh, very well uh, February 1st is also attended. when parade opens, I think. Yeah, exactly. To... That's a good, great segue. So phase one registration for the 2023 Porsche Parade in Palm Springs opens February 1st. Uh, PCA Corral and Hospitality Tent at uh, um, the 24 Hours at Daytona is January 28th and 29th. Registration for Works Reunion, of course, we've mentioned before, is open. Uh, the event itself is uh, March 3rd, so hopefully we'll see you there. On to, and then Tech Tactics East. We're super excited about this event. By the time you hear this, registration would have been open, correct? Yeah. It's not only open, but uh, maybe even sold out. But if it isn't sold out and you're thinking about coming, 
uh, to Pennsylvania. This is a uh, great event at 10, and we just got confirmation yesterday. I would have loved to have the schedule up uh, weeks, weeks ahead of time, but uh, sometimes uh, our partners don't move as quick as we like them to. Anyways, we got confirmation that we have a GT3 RS coming, the new one, and the 911 Dakar with the rally package coming. And, nice. and right now they're working on getting someone from the Porsche factory in Germany to come speak about them. So uh, as soon as we have that person's name and title, uh, we'll post it. But uh, I think a lot of people are itching to come back to this event since we've had, been had it since uh, right before COVID in 2020 was the last time we were in Easton. So the folks in Easton are excited. Um, like Melanie, our events manager, never been to one. Mm -hmm. uh, Robert's never been to one. Yeah. You've never been to one. We're gonna time. make some so social media content. That's for sure. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Especially if it snows like it does sometimes. <laughs> I hope it snows. It's always fun. All right, so folks, thanks for listening. Uh, if you cur aren't currently a PCA member and you own a Porsche, grab that VIN. Head over to PCA.org. If you uh, don't own a Porsche but need help looking for one, uh, make sure you check out our test drive program again. PCA.org. Remember to follow our podcast Instagram page behind the scenes photos and videos Porsche Club Insider all one word you can always message or email us at podcast at pca.org and with that again I wish you health happiness and prosperity until next time stay safe and we'll catch you down the road